Can you hear me? Great, thank you. Um, so hello and welcome, and really nice meeting you all here. So uh, to me, in this, with this presentation, I'm going to be doing the first part. And then we have Jim Biguadia, he's the CEO of Namata. He's gonna be doing the demo. So I got the easy part, he gets the hard part. <laughs> um, okay. okay, let me start to tell you something about me. Because uh, I really think that I have a very interesting time. Um, I'm currently with the Cisco Intercloud Services Group. I worked in the CTO office and we have a cloud innovation lab. And what I do every day is exactly what Martin talks about, you know, to break things, to build things, to find new puzzles, to find new ISVs, you know, interesting disruptive ISVs, and try to become, build new innovative cloud services and platforms. Um, three specific uh, research area that I look into, cloud native, IoT, as well as mobile. Sometimes I take them standalone, sometimes I mix them by pieces, sometimes I'm more pieces, and I put them in a pot and I churn them. What you're hearing today, the intercloud microservices, is one of the new innovation services that we spent time finding the most you know, innovative ISVs like Nomata, work with Docker, and then we put six to eight months together, and now we're launching Pilot. We want all of you here to try to become the visionaries and the theistics and the tell us feedbacks because by the time when we do production, we want to be the perfect service for you. Um, previous to that, I also have a very interesting background. I work in the corporate development group. And what I do is, again, I see what's next. I look for you know, technologies companies. I look for technology trends. And I do technical due diligence. If there's a merger acquisition that you read up in the newspaper the last two years, I'm probably part of that. Okay. So today we wanted to talk about you know, microservices and we wanted to talk about the challenges, why it's important to business and what are the challenges of microservices that we see the customers are facing. And we want to share with you some two or three solutions that are really going to help you to move and cross the chasm because microservices is actually a really new disruption technology and there's a lot of challenges along the way and we've already trying to get, get you know, a chapter in advance. Then Jim is going to do a demo. Um, so let me start off with why it, you know, Microsoft is important. Okay. How many of you are uh, application developers? Okay, so, um, so it is because right now today, you know, if you're trying to do a software release, it will typically take 8 to 12 weeks time. So that means that if you have one small change, just one small change, maybe a line of code change, it will take eight to 12 weeks before it will reach the customer. So a lot of overhead, very costly, is very slow. Well, mostly it's because all your code, whether the change or the not change, are all gonna be compiled, it's gonna be integrated, and it's going to production. After that, then it's gonna go into staging. And therefore, you have always releasing one big monolithic applications every time you make a small change. So what microservices does is that it breaks the huge monolithic applications into smaller components that can be independently changed and deployed. So that's the number one thing. Secondly is because these components are smaller, then you can rapidly, quickly deploy and change them as compared to the big applications. And thirdly is that it allows smaller teams of people that can actually independently work on that project and then also do their own release. But because microservices inherently want, requires your big application, sync application, broken into many small app components, it, there will be, be increasing a lot of the operational management of all these subcomponents. So it is actually going to be a new operational complexity challenges that all these microservices projects need to address. So we have two specific technologies that are going to uh, be dealing with these um, challenges. So when you start off with microservices, yo, you may have one or two microservices, very easy. You can build and automate tools and fix it yourself, maybe in the morning and afternoon, but as you scale, the increasing complexity 
and the amount of overhead. You don't want to spend your whole day, you're going to want to, want to hire a whole team just to manage microservices. This is where we're going to try to find innovation to help you to address that. Innovation number one, Docker. Okay, everybody here knows and heard about the famous Docker, their container engines, right? So the idea is that you can, using Docker, you can actually uh, create immutable images that you can deploy across different clouds as you choose it. Secondly is that because Docker, the containers are much lighter weight, so you can deploy them much faster, change them much faster than typical VMs. So therefore, containers themselves become the standard unit of microservice uh, operations. So that's number one thing, very important to understand, the relationship of containers as well as microservices. Secondly, um, at the end of the day, if you are really going to production and then all your containers are changing, scaling up and down at scale, you don't want to spend all the time having hiring people to do this. So Nermata is a managed microservices service. So therefore, when you finish your application here, as a, you, you, you develop the application, you choose the cloud that you want to deploy your, your microservices, then you input all those information up into a Nermata blueprint. The Nermata from that on, but that point on, will take care of and take over the management of all your microservices as they scale down, scale down, scale to every different cloud. So this is actually the best solutions. Of course, you can create your own automation solution, but this is, at, you know, for long term, this is the directions that you wanted to go. So here is a prize question. Okay, um, their ISV, cool vendor of 2015. Okay, so four options. Um, is it Docker, Nomata, both of the above, and none of the above? So anyone that wants to take a shot at it, go ahead. C, correct. All right. <laughs> so both Here's Docker and Nomata was chosen to be the Gartner coup vendor of 2015, and they announced it in May. So this is like breaking news for the world here on stage in DefNet Zone. So I'm gonna talk about inter-cloud microservices. So we now finish the basic of microservices. So what is the value of inter-cloud? Because Cisco is actually, you know, the birthplace of inter-cloud, you know, ecosystems of cloud. So what is the value added uh, that with the inter-cloud that we can bring, and we're gonna do a demo. I think today everybody knows the enterprises have many, many clouds. Private clouds, public cloud, they use every, many different clouds. They're all standalone clouds, right? And there's really no one single cloud that really can serve all the needs of an enterprise. So the idea of the inter-cloud is to have a software interface and connections so that you can uh, connect globally all the clouds together and have a single pane of management. And we have a lot of Cisco technologies that use to inter inter interconnect all these clouds. So now I'm going to share with you how we're going to mix inter-cloud and microservices together. So here we want to show this, we have two clouds, a private cloud, a public cloud. You have many, many versions of this. And then with um, a product, UCS Director, and Jim's gonna talk about that more, the, your admin is going to create your own private cloud. At the same time, he, will he or she will probably create a public cloud of choice and will set up all the interface. So what Nermata does is that they will create a policy-based blueprint so that the DevOps can now input and define clearly how they want their microservices to be deployed, which cloud, at what policy, what SLA, and then the, the whole Nermata managed service is gonna take over all the management of microservices as they, as they uh, are launched. So Jim's gonna now show a demo of this. Thank you, Vivian. All right, so let's switch over. I'm gonna bring up Nermata, which So this is actually UCS director. Oh, let me make sure we're displaying our screen.
Okay. So the first thing, like Vivian was saying, you would do is you would, through UCS Director, you could use the orchestration and catalog constructs to go ahead and build up your workflows to provision and deprovision VMs. So here you see we are in the catalog, and we have two uh, workflows over here. One is called provision Nirmata VM, and this is what we're going to use now from Nirmata to be able to invoke UCS Director uh, in your private clouds and to be able to create virtual machines. This, these virtual machines will act as a pool of servers on which you can deploy your application containers, which are Docker containers. So let's switch over to Nirmata and I'll quickly explain some of the constructs over here. So in Nirmata, because we are built ground up for microservices, applications are composed of multiple services. And then at runtime, you deploy these applications in one or more environments. You could have policies set up to, to, to control how these environments are run and where your services are placed. On the physical side, you bring in your cloud providers, which could be UCSD or your public cloud like CIS, and you can define host groups for pools of resources to manage these. So there's a quick setup guide which can run you through all of this. So for example, if you want to add new cloud providers like UCSD or even ICFD as an endpoint, uh, and once you do that, you can define your pools of resources in what we call host groups in Nirmata. Once that's set up, your developers are now ready to deploy their application containers. Before they do that, you can optionally set more policies, and you can also start you know, defining where you get your container images from through one or more public or private cloud registries. Let's take a quick look at some of the policy constructs we have in here. So one important rule here would be to manage how your resources are being placed on public or private cloud. Here we have some rules which uh, have some sandbox environments which are going into the public intercloud, which is CCS. And we have another rule which is saying I have a staging environment on UCS DCS, DC2 and a production environment going on UCS DC1. So with this, you can control on a very granular basis based on different environments. You can even choose specific container types within an application for how your uh, application gets deployed. So now that we have this set up, I'm going to quickly show you what an application looks like in Nirmata. And like I was mentioning, an application here is composed of several services. So if we drill down into this, which is an e-commerce or a shopping style application, we have about five or six different services for taking orders from customers, um, for a catalog, for other services, for recommendations, ratings, etc. And each service has configuration settings you can, uh, you can define. Most of this is optional and there's wizards to walk through this. But there's configuration settings on the network, the compute, the storage. So when this is set up and you can import, export these application blueprints, uh, now a developer or let's say, you know, if you want to spin this up through automation, through APIs for lab testing, you can quick, quickly uh, ask for more environments. So here I'm going to select uh, my, let's go with a sandbox environment and I'll select the right application. We'll stay at version, the latest version. And just walking through this wizard, so we'll let all the services be selected. Uh, in terms of the scaling policy for the environment, we're going to start with you know, one service for each environment. We have auto recovery enabled. And for my application itself, I have multiple routes defined to act as a gateway for traffic coming into the application. Once all of this is set up, and you know, the next step here is if I want to manage flows within the application, I can also specify which services talk to which services and how perhaps, you know, maybe instead of an allow action, I want to deny action to start with. Uh, once you go with the environment settings, now in a few seconds what Nirmata will do is it will figure out where the available resources are. And in this case, based on our policies, we had selected uh, this maps to the public intercloud. It, it already went, it found their hosts, it configured the IP addresses, it's pulling the Docker images, and it's running. So it literally took about 30 seconds. This, by the way, got deployed in US Texas, which is one of the CCS regions. Um, and my app is up and running and ready to manage. 
So at this point in Nirmata, there's also a number of different lifecycle management features that you can use. So say, for example, I want to quickly scale up a particular service. Uh, I can set a policy for that. And Nirmata will again calculate where the available resources are, which pools of memory to use, and go and deploy those images on those hosts. Um, similarly, if I have a specific set and environment running, um, Nirmata also monitors the health of every service. And if a host disappears or if some resources disappear, it will detect that failure and do some auto recovery in the background to make sure your application is running based on the configured policies. So here we saw that just got pulled in and deployed. There's also, as uh, the application's running, there's uh, lots of detailed statistics which are uh, available both at the application level, aggregated across your services, and also at the host level. So if I'm an administrator, I can drill down into my host groups on UCSD, or in this case, because we deployed on the public cloud, we can go in here and see how my services were deployed. I can go into a particular host, see the usage on that host, see the statistics that uh, of, my, uh, of my host usage at any given point in time. So it's very powerful and the idea is that you have both the physical view, you're still in control of the policies, the exact security settings, everything you need on the host side, but now your DevOps teams can rapidly deliver containerized applications and operate and manage them at scale. There's lots of other features within the environment itself, especially with, for example, with uh, service discovery, uh, registration, also with the load balancing across your services as your application scales. We also do things like, for example, for any of these, for troubleshooting, if you need to get to the logs, uh, you can just do that through a single click and we'll connect to the container and pull the logs for you in real time for that particular application. Nirmata also allows you to set up policies so that if you want to fully automate your DevOps pipeline, let's say you want to go um, from a programmer doing a commit to, uh, to actually deploying that into your next available environment, testing it through some automation, through your unit testing, and then promoting that to the next environment in your DevOps pipeline. You can do that by setting labels and tags for your Docker images, and also setting up policies in this screen, which is our view of the pipeline over here. So once again, the whole idea is to make it extremely easy for your DevOps teams to be able to operate and manage these type of applications. Everything we saw here through the UI is also possible to do through SDKs and through the APIs. So it's something you can build in into your automation pipelines. We're not gonna have too much time to go into much more details right now, but we do have a full demo running in CloudPod 3. So stop by there and we can show uh, many more details. So quickly to summarize, and I'll go back uh, to where we are, and we'll talk about some of the quick benefits of this solution. So what, what you just saw is along with InterCloud, which is the UCSD integration, as well as the OpenStack integration for the public cloud, and Nirmata doing the orchestration and automation, you really get a very powerful solution which goes multi-cloud, uh, as well as gives you the separation of concerns for your next generation applications. So you're, uh, as an IT admin, as a, you know administrator for your network compute storage, you don't have to change anything that in terms of how you're delivering your virtual machines, but now your DevOps teams can deliver their containerized applications, really get that rapid agility that we just saw in action, uh, and be able to leverage that. So in summary, you know, like Vivian was explaining, uh, what's driving enterprises to containers as well as microservices is this rapid delivery cycles. Everybody, you know, every business is becoming a digital software-enabled business, and as businesses, you know, uh, try to deliver software faster, these are the types of technologies that we are working with Cisco, our partner, to bring to market. Also, you know, in terms of the solution itself, uh, we have combined, you know, Docker is a very popular container engine today, so it's the best of breed. We are looking at other container technologies as they evolve, and we will continue integrating it. 
Just one last quick note. I mentioned the demo that we're running, and there's also some previous sessions we had done. There's another good session coming up uh, later today at 1 p.m., um, which uh, talks about containers and some of the related technologies. So, Steve, I don't know if you have any time for questions right now, but... Well, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but you okay. and Vivian will be available right here on the side, and okay. I know you've got your booth as well, right in the iCloud area. We do. So, Please stop by and make sure that you visit the Nomada booth. Um, anyway, thank you both very, very much, and I appreciate you, you getting us back on time. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you.